Welcome everybody to the AACA Museum Incorporated here in Hershey, Pennsylvania, the sweetest place on earth. My name is Bill Rothermel. I'm a member of the Board of Directors of the Museum and Chairperson of the Car Collection Committee here at our museum. This is our Car Chronicles, whereby we tell you about some of the cars that are in our collection. This is a 1929 Ford L29 Cabriolet. This is a magnificent car, and this was the first production front-wheel drive car sold in the United States. More about that in a moment. First of all was E.L. Cord. E.L. Cord was a marketing magician, to say the least. Eric LeBan Cord uh, began his career at the Moon Automobile Company in St. Louis as a salesperson. He very quickly went up through the ranks, later landing at the Auburn Automobile Company, and just a short time after arriving at Auburn, he actually owned the company. Auburn was his base model automobile, but a very sporting car, kind of a BMW of its time. He then also purchased Duesenberg from the Duesenberg brothers and told them to build the best car that he, they could possibly build. The cost was no object. The Cord was his middle line car named after himself. It appeared in 1929 and whereby front wheel drive was new to the automotive scene in the United States, it was not new to the world. There were European cars that had experimented with front wheel drive. Other manufacturers, of course, had done so as well. Packard built a prototype, Franklin built a prototype, but it was Cord who actually went to production with the first car. Somewhat shortly thereafter, a very short time thereafter, the Ruxton uh, was the second front wheel drive automobile built in the United States. Both cars had help from Cornelius Van Ranst, who was involved with the Miller Indy Racing Team, and the Miller cars at the time also had front wheel drive. Front wheel drive meaning that there is no drive shaft to the rear of the car, and what it enabled manufacturers to do was lower the center of gravity of the car. In 1929, this car looked almost freakish by comparison to other automobiles because it was so much lower, being that there was no drive shaft going to the rear of the car. Cars uh, then didn't have transmission humps uh, to enable the lower center of the gravity. The uh, body of the car actually sat above the transmission and cars were very tall. So the Cord was a really, really fantastic automobile in that respect. Alexis Desaknovsky was the designer who was largely involved in the, the uh, structure of the car in terms of its styling. Uh, the car was produced from 1929 to 1931. As most of you know, what happened in 1929 with the stock market crash, which did in not only lower priced automobiles, but it was devastating to much more expensive automobiles and luxury automobiles as the wealthy did not spend their money on cars for the most part. On the other hand, it's fair to say that the late 20s through the mid 30s were probably the period of time where some of the most beautiful automobiles that were ever designed came out of, uh, that, came out of that area there of the depression. This is a straight eight cylinder automobile, uh, which is why you see this long hood on the automobile. It's a Lycoming engine, which was also owned by E.L. Ford. Lycoming engines were made in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, not far uh, from the museum. And again, this car was produced from 1929 to 1931, and due to the depression, the vehicle was canceled and the market deemed no longer necessary for the Ford. Ford obviously liked the car, liked the idea of front drive, and even during those difficult times, Research and development continued on the automobile, and the Cord was reintroduced for the 1936 and 1937 model years. Once again, the company was over after that particular period of time, and Albert Cord and Duesenberg no longer existed after that period of time. E.L. Cord was a marketing genius, to say the least. He was involved in Transworld Airlines, Checker Cab, and many other companies that you might be familiar with. But he was a uh, a bit of a character and uh, gave us some of the greatest cars of the 1930s between the Auburns, the Fords, and the Duesenbergs. Thanks for joining us here at the AACA Museum and another edition of Collection Chronicles.